What I have here is just a, a quick model that I put together with one piece of data. This tool allows you to take your elevation raster data that we've collected in GIS and instantly turn it into a 3D surface with no reduction in the resolution of the actual geometry itself. What I did was I took the topo bathymetry data set of New Orleans and I brought in here just to show what it can do. At a large regional scale, New Orleans is flat. But what I wanted to illustrate with this tool is that with a few simple modifications, say for instance, going into here and multiplying the Z by 10, exaggerating the train a bit, we can actually get a, a better picture of the topographical gradient of the city. The topography of New Orleans controls everything about how the city operates from its flooding to its drainage to its natural environment. The topography is of an absolutely ridiculous level of precision and resolution where you can almost make out all the blocks of the city, even things just like the actual bathymetry of the river. With this terrain tool, all of a sudden, just the very simple question of where are the areas that are above sea level and where are the areas that are below sea level can just easily be visible using these gradient tools here. And so all I simply do is I simply take a gradient tool like this, set the base elevation to be zero, which is sea level, then create a gradient above that. So you can inverse this and show the areas that are most impacted by flooding. So I am going to talk about how to take this and build models from that. I'm going to create a new map in ArcGIS. And I'm going to add in some of the layers that uh, are uploaded into the box folder. This is that topo bathymetry for most of the New Orleans area. And then another layer is going to be this one. So this is a LiDAR raster. And then another layer that we'll add is going to be this square. This box is 2,000 foot by 2,000 foot box. We have building footprints choose an area in New Orleans. And my recommendation is use this bounding box here to map out and figure out an area. So select that box and then use the edit commands here and the move tool there to basically choose a location for this box. Find an area that has an interesting mix of infrastructure. So not just buildings and streets, but areas that maybe have an intersection of infrastructure, maybe canals or highways um, or water features, just so that we have a better overlay of a lot of different systems in New Orleans. Some of you might be interested in specific areas that don't have that condition. That's fine. But pick an area and use a square to find your site. The square does not have to be orientated north. You can rotate this so that it matches the orientation of, say, the grid of the streets. And so the way you rotate that box is you simply right click on it, choose that little rotate there, and then you can just rotate the square to basically something that matches the orientation of the grid better. Pick an area like that. An interesting mix of, well, actually right here, this, is, this area has an interesting mix of neighborhood blocks, infrastructure, canals, just a lot of different features that would be interesting to think about. Then once you basically choose an area, you just click out of it, and then this rectangle now is in its position, but it only remembers the position if you hit the save button in the edit tab of ArcGIS. So I've hit save, then uh, choose yes here, and now this position is now officially official. Now, the next step that we do is we need to take the base map information, these topo data sets, the LiDAR data set, and the bathymetry data set, and we need to clip it or trim it to basically represent an area that's kind of within the extents of this. The reason we do this is because this data set here, as you saw in the box folder, it's four gigabytes in size. That's great if you want detail at the entire city scale, but for the purposes of modeling within Infoworks, you just want to have a small portion of it. So you're not, let's say, uploading a four gigabyte layer into Infoworks. You just want a small little portion of it. So what I recommend doing is once you get your location set here, get your map close to the box and then right click on the first the topo bathymetry layer go to data then choose export raster and that allows you to export a raster with the extents matching the uh, extents of the window you see here in the first line here use the browse button there and then pick a location topo bathy demo raster and then put the extension after that so dot tiff for any raster data sets, a dot tiff. In clipping geometry, this line here, you choose current display extent. Then everything else should just basically be left as is, and then choose export. And then you see what happens is that you have now a, a new layer that represents that clipped export. Do the exact same thing with the other layer, this DSM LiDAR data set. So I'm going to right click on that, export raster, choose location, LiDAR demo raster dot tiff. 
choose current display extent and hit export. And now you see now you have two layers that represent a smaller extent around that area there. To create a model in Inforex, all it is is just basically taking one of these layers and adding it as the first layer in your model. In Inforex, we choose new and then give us model name. We'll call this one NOLA demo. Choose work local so that it just saves the model onto your desktop. And then in coordinate system here, I'm going to choose UTM 8415N, this one right here. And the reason I choose that is because we're going to use for the model extents, one of the topo layers. And the topo layer that we're going to use, its coordinate system is the UTM 8415N. In model extents, I check define model extent, load extent from file, navigate to the folder where I save those rasters. And the one that we will use for this is the topo bathymetry demo raster. And then click OK. This is what you get. You get this large rectangle. This rectangle here represents the extents of one of those rasters. And remember that raster that we exported out was kind of this dimension here. You can see that that's what you get here. So then what we're going to do is we're going to clip this area to that rectangle or that 2000 foot by 2000 foot box. And so we're going to go to the, at the top here, this ribbon, choose model and then choose uh, model properties. And then choose in the extent here, choose this load extent from file button right there, and then go to the area where you saved that 2000 by 2000 foot box. So I choose open, it's a shape file. It's going to ask you, do you want to use the first polygon or you want to use the data extents? You choose first polygon, and then you just choose okay down here. And now the model has now clipped to that rectangle. And now you add data to this. So the first data that we're going to add is going to be that raster data set. That's just the topo bathymetry. To get to the data sources button, you just going to go to the content in the manage tab right there and then choose data sources. And that pops up this thing on the right side. And then you choose this little drop down arrow here at the upper left corner of data sources. Then you choose this raster option. Find that topo bathymetry raster that you just exported from GIS. So that's this one right here. Choose that one right there. And then go to the layer here and you need to configure this. So you you double click on that layer and then it's going to ask for a coordinate system it's going to be utm 8415n and then choose close and refresh at the bottom right here and now you've created a terrain of your 2000 foot by 2000 foot neighborhood the accuracy of this terrain is super super high a few things that you should play around with as you get used to this tool here visualization settings and the way you get to that is to go to this tab um, drop down arrow to the upper right corner of your infrax model and choose um, add here to create a new custom view and call that one say for instance um, i made one called high quality but let's just say you start this for the first time you call one like hq view or whatever you can call it wow view it's choose that and then with that selected you choose the little gear right there and that brings up these view settings right there and then this here is where you can begin to say for instance adjust brightness and contrast of the actual model itself you can adjust the actual intensity of the sun sun color this is a fun thing where it basically takes the actual light condition and gives it a nice warm tone to it high visual quality this basically just increases the quality of the shadows and the rendering capabilities so sometimes whenever people play with this tool for the first time the surface opacity is not 100 percent you're going to want to make sure that obviously you work it with 100 percent surface opacity also the field of view down here this basically just sets the camera angle so that let's say for instance you want a bit more of a dramatic view of this model you can do that the thing that's really cool is if you go to this terrain view settings option here click on the little mountain looking icon you can see contours if i check on this display contour lines box here it actually just shows the actual contours for that area these are one foot contours with a major contour every five feet and you know you can even go in here and say because the topography here is so subtle at the regional scale you can maybe go to a six inch contour to get more detail in that one tool that you can use in addition to the contours is in the upper bar of the infrax tab there's this 2d distance and slope option there if you click on that you can basically click two points and basically get the relative slope between those two points, as well as the height. Play around with these options here. But the next layer that we're going to add to this model is going to be the LiDAR. So go to raster in the data sources tab, choose raster, and then we're going to choose the LiDAR raster that we just exported. So choose that. And then that comes in here and we're going to configure that the same way. So we're going to double click on that. This one has a slightly different 
coordinate system. This one uses the Louisiana NAD, Louisiana South coordinate system. So all you need to know is that when you do this yourself, just remember these coordinate systems. When you're doing the LIDAR coordinate system, use this one right here that says Harn, LA, um, Louisiana South. You can just basically um, go click on the globe there and search for Louisiana. Anna, and you'll find it in the list here. It's one, this one right here, the Louisiana South one, and it's in meters. So we're going to choose that one. And then uh, that's all good. Then we just click close and refresh. And then this thing that comes up here that says you have surfaces under the uncategorized folder or something, 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 blah, blah, blah. Do you want to open surface layer panels to manage surface layers? You hit yes. And then you take that layer that you just added, you drag it into the ground surface, put it above the topo bathymetry, and then hit that little light bulb like that and click OK. And then this is that LIDAR data now three-dimensionalized as building massings. It works very well, in my opinion, as a plan diagram. You can see here, it's almost like a hillshade. Um, it begins to lose a little bit of realism as you zoom into it because LIDAR data sets tend to have a lot of noise. This thing that you see here, that's not a real feature in New Orleans, the, the, the wall of spikes of death. It's actually just a uh, power line. I could be wrong though. New Orleans might have a wall of, of spikes of death. So we'll find out and when we go there, it could be cleaner. And so what we're going to talk about now is kind of like how to hybridize the cleaner ground elevation, the topo bathymetry raster, and then take some of the better elements of this LIDAR raster and uh, actually begin to model the actual architecture and urban fabric. There are a few techniques that I'm going to show you guys how to do. Go back to GIS. We are going to take the building footprints layer, isolate the buildings that's that are within this rectangle, this square here. And so the way we do that is we go to go to map, then go to this select by location button in the map tab. And so input features, this is going to be the thing that you want to select from. The thing we're going to select from is building footprints. This relationship, you choose intersect. And then in the selecting features here, this is the thing that you're going to use to make the selection. So that's going to be the bounding box. Yeah, this one right here. Then just click OK. And you see what it does is it instantly selects all the buildings within that rectangle. And then what we do is with that selection made, you just right click on the building footprints layer, go to data, export features, and then export this as a new shape file. So in the second line here, choose the little folder browse icon there. And then we're we'll gonna call this one buildings, export demo, choose save. And then what I recommend doing for this building layer is to go to environments in output coordinate system here, choose Louisiana South feet coordinate system and choose okay. And now you've exported a new layer. So this here, we can now turn into 3D massing. We need to tell each of these buildings right here how tall it is. We're going to ask GIS to tell us within each of these building footprints here, how tall is it based on the raster below it. This is the secret to how to model cities. So what you do is you go to their geo processing. You go to a tool called feature to point to so choose that. And this input features, this first line there, you choose that building layer that you trimmed or you clip to this square here. An output feature class, this really just leave as is. This is only a temporary layer. Then you check this box that says inside, then you hit run. So now you've created a point within each of those building footprints. So now what you do, is you take each of those points and you ask GIS to figure out at that specific point, what is the elevation of the raster below it? The next tool you use is a tool called add surface information add surface information choose that in input features this is going to be that point layer you just created so it's somewhere right here in surface you choose the lidar layer so that would be this lidar demo raster we just created and in output property you choose z right there keep in mind that this uh, raster is in meters so when it gives us a number for the elevation that's an elevation in meters then choose run and it looks like nothing happened but if you open the attribute table for these points Right there, the first new column is a Z. That is the building height relative to sea level. Now what you do, you take this information here and you join it back to the original building layer. Go to geoprocessing and then choose join field. So click on that. In input table, this is going to be the original building footprint layer. So that's going to be uh, this one right here. In input join field, this is going to be FID, which is the ID number for that building footprint layer. In join table, this is going to be that point layer that has the Z value. So we choose that point layer. Then in join table field, this is going to be what's called the original FID right there. And then in transfer fields, you choose, click that arrow, then check Z and choose add. And now that's going to basically say that when it joins these fields together, it's just going to migrate the Z value to the building footprint layer. And then all that is good. And then you choose run at the bottom. 
And now if you go back to the original building shape file right there, right click attribute table, you see right there, there's a Z column right there. So now you go back to InfoWorks. What I recommend doing when you bring in buildings is to bring it in with the topo bathymetry layer, not with the LIDAR layer, because we just want this to be a clean surface. So the way you do that is you basically go to this button called order of invisibility of surface data. So just choose that, then turn the light bulb off for the LIDAR raster, choose OK. And that kind of brings it back to uh, this here. And now you go to the data sources button there, choose the SHP because the building footprint is a shape file. So choose SHP right there. That's the one we just created. Choose open, double click on that. In the type there, choose building as your type in roof height, erase that number. There's, they always put 33 as a default. Just erase that number. Hit that unit right there, feet, change it to a meter. Then choose this expression editor button right next to that. And then in properties on the side here, go to numeric. And then right there, that Z was the elevation number. So double click on that, then just brings it in Then click OK. Check this box here, roof height above sea level, then choose close and refresh. And now you've modeled the buildings in very simple massings on the site. Right now you can see like it puts a, a random style on it where it's like this bunch of random colors. I recommend making it a very clean style. So double click on uh, the building layer again. And then in the style options right there, um, in the first line there, choose that little pencil, then choose color, then just pick a white color, click OK, then just copy and paste that white color value into the next two lines. Then click close and refresh. Now it's a little bit more of a simple image. Now you see right here that the even though the building heights are at the correct elevation at the top level, bottom of it looks like it's floating. To fix that, you go back to the configuration tab, go to the source tab, then in draping options, just choose drape and close and refresh that. And that just brings it the buildings down so that it intersects with the terrain. So now this is a very, very simple way to mass models with very basic extrusions. This is the first step in modeling architecture very basically is using the LiDAR data to get the building heights. Hopefully you're beginning to see how you can get more detail in the buildings on here. The building detail is purely dependent on how good the shape file detail is. You need to go back into ArcGIS and you need to refine the actual shape file itself. Basically, you know, let's say you want to edit this building right here, go to the edit button right there, choose a feature that you want to edit. There's a bunch of different editing functions here. Probably the easiest to use is like the split function here, because you can just take this massing here and begin to uh, split it up into more detailed massing. Just choose split. And the uh, bottom, there is this right angle drawing functionality. If you choose that, that makes it so that whenever you draw in GIS, the next line that you draw will be at locked a right angle. So that way, if you do that, then just double click, you quickly are able to capture more detail in a building. The point here is that taking, I would say, 30 minutes to an hour to just refine that base building layer here, just to get more detail. Uh, the level of detail that you get in your building is totally dependent on you. Once you finish your edits, you basically just go to the save button of the edit uh, tab and hit save, then hit yes. So that is buildings, massings. Um, the last thing about building massings is sometimes you might have pitched roofs on a building, especially residential buildings. Because the scale of, our, of your site is not that big, you can, in theory, just manually pick some roofs and give them pitched roofs. So the way you do that is in InfoWorks, you pick a building that you want to give a pitched roof. Let's say, let's pick a few building, hit a building. Let's just hit a couple of buildings. I'm just holding control on my keyboard to choose several buildings. But once you have a selection made, you can just simply go to roof slope right there. I'm just going to put a number in there. Let's put point and enter. Yeah, you can see right there. Now the buildings have a little bit of pitch roof. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to now talk about some things about how to take this Data set here, add a little bit more kind of like a hybrid between the LIDAR layer and the just basic surface layer here. Let's say there are elements of the LIDAR layer that you want to keep, but you don't want all the spikes of death in the background. Take the building layer here. I'm going to turn it off for now. And the way you can do that is you can just go to the Model Explorer button here. So in the Manage tab at the top, there's this thing called Model Explorer. If you choose that, another window opens up here. Then you can just find the layer that says buildings, which is right here, and just turn it off like that. Now we're going to go back to the model explorer or data sources, and we're going to turn back that LiDAR layer on because I just want to look at it and kind of game plan what we're going to do. Well, here's an interesting thing. We don't have this building here uh, in the model. Let's, let's say we want to bring that back. There are elements, specific elements of the LiDAR that you want to keep. 
So here's how you do in GIS. We're going to zoom into that area again. We're going to uh, use the LiDAR layer as a reference. We want to be able to like bring out these elements here, but maybe let's say the buildings want to keep as that kind of simple massing. You go to your catalog, create a new shape file, right? Click on the folder, choose new, then choose shape file. Then the future class, we'll just call this one. Let's call it trim box demo. Then in geometry type, set that as a polygon. And then in a coordinate system here, just choose, uh, ideally, if it's current map, it would be already set to the Louisiana South feet system. Then all that set, just choose run. And then on the side here, you now have this trim box demo right there. Choose that box symbology, make it so that's transparent and make it like a pink. With that selected, you go to the edit tab, then choose the create button. Then uh, on the side of the window here, there's now this create features thing there. Choose that trim box demo as the layer that you want to create stuff in. And then you basically use the drawing tools in GIS to draw a new layer. So I'm just going to use the basic line tool there. And we're going to roughly draw out an area that you want to capture the infrastructure in. Just kind of get something that represents all that infrastructure. And let's just for this demo, just capture that whole building. So then once you're finished, you just double click to close. And now you see what we've done. You've created a thing, a thing that we're going to use to clip the raster. Hit save on the edit tab there, type in clip raster. Then in input raster, you choose that LIDAR raster that we created. And output extent, you choose the trim box layer just created. And then check this box here that says use input features for clipping geometry. And then save the output raster somewhere where you can access it. So we'll save it in the same folder as everything else. And we'll call this one uh, demo infrastructure layer. Hit save and then hit run. And now you now have this, this layer here that's just that stuff you want to keep. So now you just take that layer, go back to InfoWorks, and we're going to turn off the LiDAR layer for the whole thing. And now we can add a new raster. So go to uh, the add button, choose raster, and now choose that layer that you just created, demo infrastructure layer dot tiff. So choose open, double click on that. Again, for the LiDAR data set, choose this one, the LAS, uh, Louisiana South the system to close and refresh when this pop-up window comes up you just hit yes take that layer move it to the ground surface category then turn the light bulb on click okay and now you've taken a bit of one layer and you have a bit of the other layer and you've combined it together and so now you can go back to model explorer turn on buildings and now you can begin to see this is how you can build out your little parcel so that you have bits and pieces of things that you want and now the last thing we're going to show is we're how to take this whole thing here and export it to Rhino. So when you're ready to export your model, you basically go to the present share tab at the top, then choose this share tab there, then choose export 3D model. Here you check this box that says use entire model. So check that because we're going to export the whole thing. In target coordinate system here, let's, let's leave that as is. And then in extent here, let's choose user defined. And then these numbers here, you want to remember these numbers. So I'm going to copy and paste the X, Y, and Z value into a, a notepad document that I'm just going to save because these numbers here are what you need to georeference this information again. Never forget to copy those numbers. And then in target files, I like to choose multiple files because that way it uh, kind of isolates the buildings and grounds as, as separate layers. In the file type, just click in this little folder next to the name there, change target file. And then I'll just save this on my desktop. Save these as .obj files. So for ground, we'll, we'll save it as a .obj. And then for buildings, save it as a .obj. And then all this other stuff is okay. So just click export. And then, you know, as you open your model, make sure you choose a template that is in the unit meters. And then we'll go into the view here, type in import. First, import the ground layer. So I, I click on ground right there, click open. And then when it shows these import settings, make sure this is checked, map OBJY to Rhino Z. There it is right there. Let me go to just a very simple 3D shaded view, then type in import again. So same thing, when you import the buildings, make sure this is checked, OBJY to Rhino Z, and there it is. So now you have your model in Rhino, and you can now begin to use this to mass out and finish, say, for instance, you want to model other elements. Keep in mind that this is a mesh, so sometimes modeling with meshes is a little annoying. Uh, this is what you get with Infrax is, is meshes. This is also a, a way that you can potentially clean up stuff like the spikes of death here. You can choose this 
surface here, you can type points on, P-O-N, points on. Then you get all the vertices for the points here. And then you can maybe select, for instance, uh, select a bunch of those points there, that selection. And then maybe choose like a set point command and choose Z to kind of like smoosh all those like that. So that is how you bring your model into Rhino. And, you know, one thing to also note is that the topography here, this, because it was derived from the DEM with no reduction in quality, if you cut contours from this, these will be as good as contours that you cut from GIS. Go to a front view, type in contour, let's do a vertical set of contours, and then choose one. There you go. And then you can move that to a new layer. What would you do? Let's say you want to bring in, let's say, let me bring in the parcel data. Again, you can use that selection tool. So go to map, um, select by location, choose tax parcels in the selection feature, choose that box, click apply. Then with this selected, you can go to geoprocessing, export to CAD, choose export to CAD, choose that tax parcel layer. As long as this is selected, it will only export what's selected. Uh, an output file will just save it to my desktop. Call this one tax parcels. And then in environments, check the layer that you used. Um, it would be the this one where the UTM 15N coordinate system. You want to make sure that the coordinate systems that you export are consistent with whatever is being used in the Rhino file. So that should be it. Then choose run. Yeah, it's right there. DWG tax parcels. So import, go to desktop, choose the tax parcel layer. The units are in meters. Click OK. And then if you select zoom to it, it comes in at the correct geo-reference location. So remember these numbers here, here's what you do. You format it like this, where you put up the X, Y, Z with a comma in between each number. You copy that in Rhino, you type in point, location of point, just paste, control V. You see that point just appeared right there. So now if you select these parcels then move them to M for move, choose that point as your origin and type in zero comma zero comma zero. Now your parcels are in exactly the geo reference location. That is how you're, you're able to basically get that lot information into your uh, model file. That is it. That's my tutorial for you all. I hope you all enjoyed it. Okay, that's it. Uh, no more, no more. Mimi, say goodbye to everyone. All right, I'll see you guys. And if there's any more questions, we'll just, we'll catch up on uh, Monday. Thanks everyone. Uh, um, uh, loaded. Choose this load extent from file.